Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Easter. My name is Jerry Berenger, pastor of Champion Life Center, and on behalf of our church, we welcome you, and I trust that you are enjoying this presentation of Risen King. And in just a few minutes, we will continue on with the presentation, but this will not be complete without the message of Easter. And to most people, it's just an ordinary holiday weekend uh, to have a good time with good weather and time with friends and family, not realizing that more than 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died for their sins. And so Easter, my brothers and sisters, not about bunnies or chocolate eggs, uh, but actually, although that's fun, but it's actually Easter is about the fact that the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ that gave us hope. In spite of the bad news around us, there's the good news. Because of what Jesus has done, we have been reconciled to God and changed everything in our lives. Here's what the scriptures tell us. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 1 to 8, it says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Friends, more than 2,000 years ago, Jesus came from heaven and lived among us. He had no sin, but he became sin for us. And that meant that he died and became the sacrifice to pay for our sins. He took our place. For about six hours, Jesus suffered in pain and carried our sin. Finally, on the ninth hour, that is about 3 p.m., he breathed his last. He died and was buried. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. And friends, throughout the history of mankind, Jesus is the only one who resurrected from the dead. This proves that he is the Son of God. He is the risen King. And he did what he said he will do. So today, we celebrate the fact that Jesus rose from the dead and he is alive. God's not dead. He's alive. Come on, give him praise. <laughs> See, friends, his resurrection proved that he is God and we can put our faith in him. But the question that many people ask is, why was it necessary for Jesus to die in the first place? What does this resurrection mean to us? And here's what the Bible tells us. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8 to 10, it says, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's judgment. For since we were restored to friendship with God by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, he will certainly be delivered from eternal punishment by his life. See, the word of God tells us that because of his great love for us, Jesus died for us while we were still sinners to reconcile us to God. And his resurrection delivered us from the punishment that gave us life. I would like to share three things to you today. Three truths that may minister to you. First of all, he died to redeem us. Jesus Christ died to redeem us. To redeem us means to buy back something. And Jesus Christ died so that we will be saved from the judgment of God. He is our Savior. Without the sacrifice of Jesus, there's no redemption of our sins. And friends, 
the, the Bible tells us that God is the one that brought, uh, that, that came for us through Jesus Christ. He had no sin, but he became sin for us. Because, friends, Romans 5, 8 to 9 says, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's judgment. We were saved from God's judgment. Why was it necessary to save us? The Bible tells us that we were created in his image and for his pleasure. But friends, we were separated from God. We have gone in our own ways, doing our own thing. And so that's why it says in Isaiah, all of us have strayed away like sheep. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the guilt and sins of us all. You see, friends, but doing our own thing, going away from God, has consequences. We are separated from our God who is holy. That's why in Romans 6.23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, the penalty of sin is God's judgment. That is the uh, spiritual death and the eternal separation from God. But the problem is, we cannot save ourselves. Even though we're separated from God, we cannot save ourselves. There is nothing we can do that will bring us back to God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9 says, But God saved you by his special favor when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. Friends, there is nothing you and I can do because our righteousness is just filthy rags to God. If we can do it ourselves, if we can save ourselves by doing good things, then Jesus doesn't have to die. He wouldn't have to come if we could do it by ourselves. But the reality is we can't. It is a gift. So God's gift is Jesus. Amen. Amen. He sent the, his son Jesus Christ. John chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it but to save it. Friends, Jesus Christ came not to condemn you. Not to condemn you. It doesn't matter what we have done. No matter how wrong we've been, he didn't come to condemn us. He came to save us. By believing in him, we can have eternal life. Because he was blameless, we now become blameless in the sight of God. He is the only way to God. John 14, 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men. So friends, there is no other way. There is no way from through other people or doing our own thing. There is no other way to go to heaven except through Jesus Christ. When we could not save ourselves, the Bible says Jesus came for us. That's why in Romans chapter 5, verse 6, it says this, When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Aren't you glad that he came for us at just the right time? You know, when we were dying in our sins, when we were lost, when we are away from our God, when our lives is a mess, still he came to save us. Praise God. He died to restore us as well. Not only did he die to redeem us, but he died to restore us. Jesus died to restore our relationship with God. In Romans chapter 5, verse 10 to 11, it says, For since we were restored to friendship with God by the death of his son, 
while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be delivered from eternal punishment by his life. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us in making us friends of God. Ladies and gentlemen, through Jesus Christ, we have been restored. Restore means to bring back to this thing that the thing that the Lord Jesus Christ brought back is our relationship with God. He restored that relationship. We read in the scriptures that we can rejoice with our wonderful new relationship with God all because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. See, in the beginning, when God created Adam and Eve, they enjoyed a close relationship with Him. But when they sinned, that relationship was broken. And Jesus restored our relationship with God. So now, we are friends of God. Aren't you glad you're a friend of God? Can you tell the person beside you, you are a friend of God? Amen. You are not an enemy. God is not angry at you. He wants you to be restored to Him. Jesus has already died on the cross so that you and I can become friends of God. Not only did He restore relationship, but He also restored your authority. Adam and Eve had power and authority over everything. When they sinned, that authority was lost. And through Jesus Christ, you have gained your authority. The Lord gave you back that authority again. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verse 19, it says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Friends, therefore you have the authority to overcome your circumstances. No matter what situation you're in, no matter how bad it is, no matter how difficult it is, the Lord has given you back the authority to overcome your circumstance. Why? Because he's resurrected from the dead and he broke the power of the enemy. And so friends, not only did he restore your authority, but he gave you an abundant life. Jesus restored life to make you whole. Many of us are broken. We have many disappointments, things that have happened in your life, things maybe in the past that have broken us. But the Lord has brought us to make us whole, brought life to us. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5 says, Even though we were spiritually dead and doomed by our sins, He gave us back our lives again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only did he give us life, but an abundant life. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. He gave us back our lives again. John 10, verse 10 to 12. The thief's purpose, that's the enemy, the devil, is to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus says, my purpose is to give life in all its fullness. I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And that's what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. He restored life to us and gave us an abundant life. But not only did he redeem us and restore, to restore us, but he also died to release us. Jesus died to release us from the grip of the devil. He set us free. And the reason why we celebrate today on Resurrection Sunday is because He is alive. He overcame death. Amen. When He overcame death, the first thing He did is He broke the power of the devil. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2 tells us, Jesus also became flesh and blood by being born in human form. For only as a human being could He die. And only by dying could He break the power of the devil who had the power of death. And so, friends, that's why Jesus became human, so that he could die and break that power of the devil. Death could not hold him. Jesus is risen. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. 
He who believes in me will not perish. He will never die. See, that's the risen king. <laughs> not only that he broke the power of the devil, but he set the captives free. That's what Jesus did. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19, it says, He sent me to proclaim the captives will be released, that the blind will see, and the downtrodden will be freed from their oppressors, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Friends, Jesus has set us free. You're no longer bound by sin. You're no longer bound by the things that hold you. There may be vices or things that you feel like you cannot shake out of your life. I want you to know today that through the power of Christ in His resurrection, you can be free from that. and You can overcome because He set the captives free. And then finally, He said He released the favor of God. Jesus released the favor of God. We read in the scripture that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Jesus came and released the favor of God upon us. His favor is upon you. It's available for you. Amen. Tell the person beside you, the favor, is God, the favor of God is available for you. It's available. The power of God and his favor is upon you. Jesus died on the cross and rose again from the dead, brothers and sisters, to redeem you from eternal punishment and save you and then to restore you into that original relationship with God and reconcile you back to him and also to release you from the power of the devil and set you free and pour his favor upon you. Now that you know the purpose of Christ's death and that he is alive, the good news is we can receive all these blessings from God by receiving Jesus into our lives. Amen? God loves you. He wants to bless you. He desires to have a relationship with you, a personal one. He wants you to be redeemed. He wants to change everything in your life. He, the only thing you need to do is to ask Jesus to come into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. And friends, receiving Jesus is just to acknowledge what he has done for us on the cross. That's all it is. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. I just want to encourage you today. All of us are creation of God, but not all of us are children of God. We were born into this world and you had no choice in what family you belong. You were created by God and you were born into this world. You did not choose your parents. You did not choose your family. But to be born in the family of God, you have to make a choice. It's not something that your parents did for you. It's not something that, you, that was given to you when you were a little kid or when you were a baby. It is a choice that you make, understanding what Jesus Christ has done for you. That's a choice. Those who believed in his name, it says you have the right to become children of God. So not all of us are children of God. We can become a child of God if we choose to. And so that's why, friends, I'd like to just say to you today, you and I have that opportunity. You may say, well, pastor, I like to be a child of God. Now I understand God's love and plan for my life, that he wants to bless me, that he wants to set me free and, and save me from the punishment I want to receive Christ as my Lord and Savior. How do I do that? I'm sure that's the question that comes into your mind. How can I receive Christ as my Lord and Savior? Well, how to receive Christ is very simple. It's like just an A, B, C, D, all right? And just follow along with me. The first thing is this. You acknowledge that you have sinned. The first step to recovery 
is always to acknowledge where you are, to admit your sin, to admit where you are. That's how we get recovered. That's why in 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, it says, if we claim to be without sin, we are deceiving ourselves. And the truth is not in us. So if we think, well, I'm okay. I don't need to ask forgiveness. I'm, I'm just fine. We're deceiving ourselves. Because certainly we fall short of the holy God. And the second thing that we need to do is believe that Jesus Christ can forgive you and save you from your sin. And that's the good news. Because no matter how bad we've been, no matter how grave our sin is, Jesus can forgive us. We just need to believe that Jesus can forgive our sins. Did you know that there is no sin that Jesus cannot forgive? Now you may say, well, pastor, you don't know what I've done. Nobody knows my sin. I've not told anybody. You know, I've kept it in secret for many years, and nobody knows what I've done. I want you to know, God knows, and He's saying today, He can forgive you. Amen. Amen. Just believe that He can forgive you. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 to 10 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us, and look at this, from all un unrighteousness. See, Friends, all our unrighteousness, the Lord can forgive us and cleanse us. And the third thing we do, now that we admit we have sinned, we believe He can forgive us, then we need to confess our sins and repent. You see, friends, we need to confess about it. Tell it to God. He already knows our sin. All we have to do is acknowledge it and confess it. He knows that. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says this, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Wow, what a wonderful promise of God. Just ask him to forgive you. See, friends, time will not forgive you. You may say, well, I've done this long time ago. I'm not doing it anymore. Well, that's not forgiven. That is separating you from God. See, the only way it gets forgiven is if we confess that sin before God, and that is the only time we are forgiven. So today, ask the Lord to forgive us of our sin. And finally, the fourth thing is decide to follow Him. Just demonstrate it in your life. Today, you and I have the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ in your life. You may not have that chance again. Today, I want to encourage you. You see, I give life to the Lord and to say, yes, from this time forward, I am now a child of God and I'm assured of heaven. Amen. Amen. So we the moment i'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you want jesus christ into your life you want to be a child of god you just need to raise your hand okay at the count of three i'm going to ask you to raise your hand you see don't don't worry about what the other person is going to do beside you don't worry about the person in front of you or behind you you know not about your what your parents will do your children or your spouse will do because at the end of the day you and I will be accountable to God. It's between you and Him. All right? And so today, it's about you and God, what you will do and what decision you will make for the Lord. So there's nothing to be ashamed about. You're in the house of God. We don't need to be ashamed to raise our hand because we're standing up for Jesus. You know that Jesus was not ashamed to give His life for you? Do you know that he was beaten, he was mocked, he was insulted, he was whipped, he was nailed to the cross for your sins and mine. And he was put up for the world to see, and he was not ashamed of you and I. So will you stand up for him and say, I'm not ashamed to receive Jesus Christ. I want him in my life. 
And that's why Jesus will say this in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 32, 33. If anyone acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will openly acknowledge that person before my Father in heaven. But if anyone denies me here on earth, I will deny that person before my Father in heaven. Friends, the scripture is very clear. The time to acknowledge Jesus is here and now. It's when you're still alive, when you still have the opportunity. You see, because the best time that you can receive Christ is now when you're able to do it. Because one day, we won't have the opportunity to do it. And Jesus says, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. And so today, we have that opportunity. The best thing you can do for this Easter weekend is to surrender your life to Christ. And this will give meaning to this weekend. So it's not just going to be uh, bunnies and eggs and chocolate, but it's about giving your life to Christ and being assured of heaven. Hallelujah. So will you take a step of faith and meet your Savior at the cross? See, you're not joining a religion. You're not even joining a church. You're committing your life to the one who died for you, Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords. And so, my friends, at the count of three, as I mentioned, at the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise it your hand. You do, if you do not have an intimate relationship with God, if that's you here today, and you don't have that intimate relationship with the Lord, maybe you had a religion. When you were a little kid, maybe the, the, your mom, your parents brought you to church. Maybe you went to church uh, regularly, but you know you don't have a personal relationship with him. You're not really obeying him. You did not really uh, offer your life to, to him yet. Well, friends, going to church will not save you. Doing good deeds will not save you. Only a personal relationship with him when you acknowledge what he has done for you on the cross. That's what will save you. And so if that's you here today and you want Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, at the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. And if you're here also and you know you've been with the Lord, you've known him, but you've gone away from him. Somehow, somewhere along the line, you started doing your own thing again. You started just, you know, going on your own way. And you're now again not having a relationship with the Lord. And I want you to know today, God wants you back. You can also raise your hand because today you can be restored in that relationship with God. The Lord also wants you home to be in the family of God. All right? And so, are you ready? I'm going to count up to three. And if that's you today, I want you to raise your hand. All over here. You know that all over the world, millions of people are accepting and receiving Jesus Christ. You don't need to be ashamed. Just the other day, over 50 people in, in a service that we had received Jesus. And this morning, 30 people received Jesus Christ. And so you know what? Today, you can also receive Jesus Christ. All right? So at the count of three, one, two, three. Anybody here who wants Jesus? There you are. I've seen those hands. All right, there you go. Don't be ashamed. That's right. Hallelujah. All right, that's good. All right, now... I told you I'm going to pray for you. Please, please stand up, those that raise your hand. Please stand up. Please stand up, those that raise your hand. There you go. All right. Anybody else? That's good. That's good. That's good. Now, can you please come forward right over here? I want to pray for you. Come on. Let's give praise to the Lord for all these people. Come. The family, come over here. Come over here. We want to pray for you. Come over here. We want to pray for you. Hallelujah. It's, we'll wait for you. Anybody else? Anybody else? You want Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just come. Just come. And if you have gone away from the Lord and you want to return back to Him today, this is the time to be restored.